have ever been out walking in Singapore, you have for sure seen signs warning not to feed animals, more specifically, monkeys. These signs aren't for nothing, as feeding any wildlife can lead towards accidents for both the animals that are too comfortable approaching humans and people who happen to bring food near the animal. In Singapore, we have one species of monkey, the long-tailed macaw, or crab-eating macaw. The long-tailed macaw dwells in primary and secondary forests, mangroves, plantations, and the outskirts of towns and villages. St. John's Island's mix of coasts, mangroves, and rainforests makes it the perfect place for them. The long-tailed macaw's diet is very diverse due to its flexibility between habitats. The long-tailed macaw tends to feed on fruits, leaves, small mammals, birds, shellfish, crabs, as well as human leftovers. The long-tailed macaw is often found in troops, meaning this solitary long-tailed macaw is most likely a male trying to find a troop to lead and a territory to claim. The long-tailed macaw is active in both night and day. They are mainly found above ground in trees, but are known to forage for food on the ground as well. Their body is approximately 40 to 47 centimeters in length, and its tail is an extra 50 to 60 centimeters. Male long-tailed macaws weigh between 5 to 7 kilograms, while females weigh closer to 3 to 4 kilograms. Their, their fur is gray-brown to reddish-brown in color. The IUCN lists the long-tailed macaw's population as vulnerable and decreasing due to lack of mature individuals. Look up and you might see a majestic beast flying through the sky. At 44 to 52 centimeters, the Brahmi kite is most recognizable by its stalking resemblance to the bald eagle. Its head and upper body are a bright white and its backside and wings a rich brown color. The Brahmi kite is primarily a scavenger, feeding mainly on dead fish and crabs, but occasionally they hunt live prey as well, such as hares and bats. The Brahmi kite largely inhabits coastal areas. These two Brahmi kites were seen at their nest just off the coast of St. John's Island. In Asia, the Brahmi kite's breeding season is between December to April. During this time, mates will collect sticks and leaves to construct the nest. Based on the time of year, their nest, and the fact that they are in a pair, I believe these Brahmi kites are about to, or already have, begin the mating process. After breeding, the female will incubate the eggs for approximately 26 to 27 days. According to the IUCN Red List, the Brahmi kite is considered to be the least concerned for endangerment. Before we part ways, I would like to remind you how to stay safe when watching our wild neighbors. The National Park Service recommends seven simple ways to keep yourself and your environment safe while viewing. 1. Know before you go. Educate yourself about the park you are visiting before you go. 2. Give animals room. Keep a safe distance between yourself and the animal at all times. 3. Do not disturb. Leave the animal alone. They are perfectly fine in their own habitat. 4. Keep your eyes on the road. Both when driving and not, it's important to watch your surroundings to make sure you do not accidentally tread on someone. 5. Store your food, stash your trash. Pretty simple. 6. See something, say something. If you see an animal acting strange, that looks sick, or could possibly be dead, tell a ranger. Also, inform a ranger if you see anyone else not following the proper protocols. 7. Be responsible. Bottom line, it's your responsibility to keep yourself and wildlife safe when watching. Thank you so much for watching. It would mean the world to me if you could fill out the short form linked in the description. As always, all my sources are in the description, and all footage is mine unless stated otherwise. Stay safe and keep exploring.